another Sunday online. If you are just joining us for the first time, then hi, you are so welcome. My name is Lizzie and I am the children and families worker here at Patton Church. And to all of you watching for the 16th time, yes, this is episode 16, then hi, you're so welcome and it's so good that you could join us again. Now, as usual on Kids Online, we love to start our videos with some more family worship. So, wherever you are, why don't you stand up and give yourself a little bit of shake out. Shake up high and then shake down low. And maybe do a bit of a Mexican wave as well. Amazing. Now, let's do some worship. can see the promised land Though there's pain within the plan There is victory in the end Your love is my battle cry When my fear is like Jericho Build the walls around my soul When my heart is overthrown Try 
And this is where you hope that you don't have any holes at the end of your tights, otherwise your apple is going to roll far away. Right, so I'm going to just tie a little knot at the bottom so the other leg doesn't go flying. Amazing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to put this on my head, just like a hat. There we go. A very cool look, if I say so myself. <laughs> so, the aim of the game is you are going to have 60 seconds to try and hit as many bottles as you can over with this. And you can't use your hands, you can't use your feet, you've just got to use your head to try and move it and see how many bottles you can get over in 60 seconds. I'm going to have a go and show you how um, we can do this and why don't you have a go as well at home and see how many you can knock over in 60 seconds. What's your favourite bit, Bae? My favourite bit is when Samson breaks out of prison. He is the beginning. Can you read it? It says, in the beginning, in the beginning there was nothing, nothing except for God. God. Bye, Bae! Bye-bye! That was so great. Thank you so much for sharing. And if you would like a Bible at home, maybe you don't have one already, then why don't you have a look at some of our recommendations? You may have noticed that I have a couple of recommendations for Bibles around me here. I've got some up here and I've got one down here. There are so many different types of Bibles to choose from. And did you know that the Bible is made up of more than 40 different authors? A priest, a king, a fisherman, a tax collector, a physician and many, many more. And it was written in many different places and in different languages too. And here's something funny. Why don't you try and read the next fact along with me? It's going to pop up on the screen. The New Testament was originally written like this, with no spaces between words. It had no punctuation and no paragraph breaks. It was written with no verse numbers, chapter numbers or section headings. These were added later to help readers like us. Wow, I had to really, really look at that to be able to read it. And I'm so glad that we have paragraphs and spaces and numbers and chapters to help us when we read the Bible. And my big question to you this morning is, what's the most valuable and treasured thing that you own? Why don't you pause this video and go and find your most valuable, most precious possession, bring it back to wherever you are, and talk to your family about why it's valuable to you. I wonder what things you shared at home. I'd love to share some of mine with you and I've brought three things. My first thing that is very valuable and very treasured is my trusty jar of Nutella. I love Nutella, it tastes so, so good. And I value it in my life because it tastes so good on toast, on pancakes, and even in cake. Not only does it add value to my life, it adds flavor to my food. The next thing that's valuable and treasured to me is my wedding ring. Sometimes when we talk about things that are valuable to us, we think about how expensive they are. I guess in some ways, the ring is valuable because it costs money, but more importantly, 
it's valuable to me because it's a symbol of an incredibly special day, which is when I got married. Now, the final most valuable and treasured possession that I own, and some of you may have guessed this, but it's actually my Bible. And the Bible is like a treasure trove full of God's word. There's always a treasure waiting for us when we dive inside, and that's so exciting. I love to read the Bible in any situation, whether I'm happy or sad, angry, worried, or even confused. There's always a treasure inside the Bible that is able to help me with whatever I'm feeling. A treasure from God's word. And in the Bible, if we turn to Psalm 119, verse 162, that's a long one, it says this. I rejoice in your word like one who discovers great treasure. And speaking of treasure, we have a very treasure-themed story for you all today. So when you're ready, sit back, relax, and let's take a look at our story. Hi everyone, so today's story is going to be from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And if you want to read along at home, and if you have the Bible at home, then you can read it in page 250. If you want to read it along in your own Bible, then you can find it in Matthew chapter 13. So this story is called Treasure Hunt. One day, Jesus was telling people about God's kingdom. God's kingdom is wherever God is king, Jesus told them. It's wherever God is in charge. It's where he fills your heart up with his forever happiness and you stop running away from him and you love him. But sometimes people couldn't understand things very well. So Jesus helped them by telling them stories called parables. Jesus said, God's kingdom is like a hidden treasure. And then he told them this story. Once upon a time, there was a man working in a field, digging. So there he is digging. But what he doesn't know is that in that field, there is buried treasure. So dig, 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 clink, clank. Conk! Uh-oh! His shovel bumps into something hard. Hello, what's this? He picks it up, dusts it off. It's a chest. It's rusted and locked, but... Creak! He pries it open. What he sees inside takes his breath away. Beautiful, glittering, gleaming, twinkling, sparkling, precious jewels. It's a treasure chest. He wants that treasure. He needs to get that treasure. He must have that treasure somehow, even if he has to sell everything he can so he can pay for it. He quickly buries the treasure again, runs home and sells everything he has. He takes the money from the sale and goes and buys that field. Now he owns the field and the treasure that, that is buried in it. He runs back and digs up the treasure again. Jesus said, coming home to God is as wonderful as finding a treasure. You might have to dig before you find it. You might have to look before you see it. You might even have to give up everything you have to get it. But being where God is, being in his kingdom, that's more important than anything else in the world. It's worth anything you have to give up, Jesus told them, because God is the real treasure. God had a treasure too, of course, a treasure that was lost long, long ago. What was God's treasure? His most important thing? The thing God loved best in all the world? God's treasure was his children. It's why Jesus had to come into the world to find God's treasure and pay the price to win them back. And Jesus would do it, even if it cost him everything he had. When the steam of an underground cave, well, caves in, it creates something called a sinkhole. And it's a special kind of sinkhole called a synergy. Now, if that sinkhole fills with water, or rain from an underground stream, it becomes a synote. And in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, there are 
thousands of synergies. In fact, most of that area's water comes from them. That explains why they were so important to the ancient Mayans that used to live there. In fact, the word synergy even comes from an ancient Mayan word that means sacred well. These pools are often used for swimming or scuba diving, and archaeologists diving into their depths have found fossils of mammoths, sloths, giant jaguars, even camels, and pieces of jade or gold or pottery. And of course, there are all of the natural cave features too, the stalactites and stalagmites, which, for those that don't know, are the pointy things that hang down from the ceiling that look a little bit like icicles. When you dive into a synergy, you never know what treasure you might find. And that's like God's word. When you dive into God's word, when you dive into the Bible, you never know what you might find. You are sure to find a treasure. And in today's story, we learn that opening our hearts to God is as wonderful as finding a treasure. And sometimes we might have to look hard and dig before we find it, but it's there and it's exciting. In fact, the man in today's story was so happy when he found the treasure that he sold everything he owned just to buy that field with that treasure. When we read the Bible, we might find out something about God that we never knew before, or something about ourselves that we never knew before or the answer to a tough problem that we've been facing, or even a promise that reminds you of God's love. Like the promise we heard about last week in our prayer time with Noah and the rainbow. Unlike other books, the Bible and the Word of God is made alive by the Holy Spirit, which means there is always a treasure for you when you dive inside. And before we dive into the Bible, we can pray and ask God to show us the treasure that he wants us to find. And I'm going to hand over to our family this week who are going to lead us in some amazing prayer to show us how we can do that. Hi, I'm Beth. Hi, I'm Chloe. And today, Beth, we're going to go on a treasure hunt. We're going to go on a treasure hunt. Chloe, look what we've got here. Nothing. It's empty, isn't it? You need to go and find the treasure. Do you think you can do that? Do you think you might need some things to help you? Shall we put on your pirate hat and your telescope? Okay. Pirate hat. Here's your telescope. And what are you going to go and look for, Flory? You're going to go and look for the... Treasure hunt. Treasure. How about over there under the apple tree? It's a treasure. Some more treasure. Quick, put it in the chest. And the pirate coins. What is it? 
what's inside? Those. Yeah. Those. Lots and lots of treasure. <gasps> wow, look at all this amazing treasure that you found, Florrie. Do you know there's something on this table that's even more precious than all of this treasure? Do you know what this book is, Florrie? Yeah. What is it? Bible. Bible, and it's got stories in it about? Jesus. That's right, stories about Jesus. And I think that this book contains so much treasure and so many precious things got, that God wants got, to tell us. It's got lots of books. Yeah, inside the Bible there's lots of books and you know they come in all shapes and sizes. There's smaller Bibles for children, there's Bibles for grown-ups, there's Bibles that you can colour in and I think that the Bible is a real treasure. Shall we go and pray now, Florrie? Come on then. Okay, so it'd be really nice if we could pray now that when we read the Bible, God shows us all of the treasure that he's got inside the Bible for us, that he thinks we're precious that he thinks that we're loved and he thinks we're amazing. Should, yeah. we, should we pray now? Yeah. Okay, maybe you could put your hands together and close your eyes. Might help you. And what do we say? Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your book, the Bible. We thank you that it's so full of treasure. It's so full of amazing things that you want to say to us and that you want to teach us and that you want to That's reveal us. Life. Help us, as we read the Bible, to know the treasures and the precious things that are inside it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's so important that we remember to pray when we open the Bible. By praying, we can ask God to show us the treasure he wants us to find. And our challenge this week is to do exactly that. This week, we would love you to try praying before you open the Bible. Maybe this is something that you already do a little bit, but you'd like to do more of. Or maybe this is something that's completely new to you. Have a go. Maybe you've not even tried reading the Bible before. And if so, that's fine. Why don't you take the time this week to have a go? Once you've prayed, we would then love you to open up the Bible and look for one of these things. Maybe a truth about who God is, or a promise of God's love to you, or an action that God wants you to take. And you might be thinking, well Lizzie, where on earth do I start? Well, don't worry, because we have a couple of verses that you can have a look at and find some treasure in those verses. You could check out 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, or maybe Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 or Matthew chapter 22 verse 39. When you've had a look at your verse, we would love you to create a picture with the verse that you find. And we would love you to send it into us so we can share those verses with each other and we can share the treasure that we find. And you can do that by emailing me at lizzie at patternchurch.org and maybe we'll show a few of them in next week's video. Now, as usual, we love sharing our top tips for reading the Bible. And this week we have Chris, who some of you may recognise from being in our year one to year three room. So let's check out his top tip for reading the Bible. Hi there, everyone. I'm just here because I wanted to talk to you all about reading the Bible and my own little helpful Bible tip. So for me, one of the most important things when I'm reading the Bible is to make sure I understand what's actually going on and kind of just the, the ins and outs and things that you might not see directly written down that kind of come with the history of what was going on. So just like in real life where if you hear about someone doing something or a rumour about someone and you don't know the reasons why they did what they did, it can be easy to come to the wrong assumptions. And it's the same with the Bible. If we read the Bible but we don't really understand what was going on at that time or in that place and the reasons why the people acted the way they did, it can be easy for us to take the wrong kind of side to that story and come to the wrong assumptions. So that's why my big Bible tip is to try and understand the context in the Bible or basically the story going on in the background because by asking people whether that be parents or people at church, people at Sunday school, 
There are definitely ways of finding that stuff out, and if we can't give you the answer directly, we can definitely tell you how to get to those answers. So, just do your best to try and understand those things, and try and take those things into account before you come to any conclusions. That's my tip. Hope you all enjoyed, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Wow, that was so amazing. I'm finding these top tips really helpful. Now, why don't we pray all together? Lord, I thank you for the treasures of the Bible and I pray that you will open up our hearts so that we can dive into your word and find treasure every day. Amen. Amen. Now, as usual, we love to leave you guys with some questions that you can do at home, whether it's straight after this video or in your week or whenever you want. Your questions this week are, what can we do before we dive into God's word? What sort of treasure could we find when reading God's word? How do you feel about God having treasure for us in the Bible? And that is it for another week. Don't forget to send in your challenge entries, or maybe you're doing something really cool this week that you would love to share with us. You can do that by sending in all of your pictures and emails to me at lizzie at pattonchurch.org. And parents, this one is for you too. Perhaps this is your first time watching with your family and you would love to get connected. And if you would love to do that, you can email either me at lizzie at pattonchurch.org or hello at pattonchurch.org and myself or one of the team will be able to get in contact and say hi. I hope you've all had an amazing week and I hope you all have an amazing week this week. Keep smiling and I will see you all soon. Bye!